It's grey, it's overcast and it's very still. But believe it or not, these are the perfect conditions for what I've got planned this morning. Good morning and welcome to the Cobb and Lime Regis in Dorset. Now, this morning is all going to be about embracing the grey. Now, I often talk about my videos light. I'm looking for light, I want morning light, I want evening light. That's because most of the photographs I take require good light. I need that soft, warm light to make the most of the scene. So, sometimes it's just good to do something a little bit different. Because particularly here in the UK, that warm light that you get from a nice sunrise or sunset doesn't happen that often. Quite often you've got to deal with the grey overcast days. And that's exactly what's here today. It's grey, it's overcast and it's very still. So even though I've not got that nice epic light, it's about picking the right subject for the, for the right conditions. And I think by coming here to the cob on this grey sort of misty day, I've got the right subject. Now I've shot the cob a few times before, but it's always when the sun's rising over there and I get some nice light on the curve and the waves are crashing over. It's all very epic and dramatic, but I'm going for the very opposite thing this morning. I want a nice, calm, relaxed photograph. Okay, let's talk about the composition this morning. So the most obvious element is, of course, the cob. It's a fantastic thing to photograph. You've got this very distinctive S shape as it sweeps out into the sea. And the texture is absolutely wonderful. It's got made up of all these stones and they're all slightly different colors and patterns and they've all got markings in them. It makes for a really strong compositional element. And as that bends out into the sea, I'm going to balance that with the sea itself as it kind of sweeps in with it on that short day. Like I say, give a bit of balance between the, the strong graphical element of the cob and the calmness of the sea. Now, as the sea goes out further into the distance, we then got the um, horizon. Now, the horizon is obviously very cloudy at the moment. This is one of the things that I was looking for this morning uh, when I was checking the weather. So it's very sort of misty and gray and foggy and it's come right down to the sea. So there's barely actually an horizon to see. So I'm hoping that when I take the picture, the kind of sea will almost blend into the sky. And overall, I should have a nice, calm picture. Right, very quickly, let's talk about equipment. So camera I'm using this morning, I'm using the Nikon Z7 with the 14 to 30 f4 lens um, i'm shooting about 15 16 mils i think at the moment not quite at its uh, widest angle uh, i've got the camera in a vertical orientation as well and i've done this because i want to make the most of that s curve so as it comes really from the bottom of the frame and out into the sea and that's best in a vertical format i am of course using some filters this morning uh, the main filter uh, well one of the most important filters in my bag that I'm using this morning is a circular polarizer and this is to help me control some of the reflections in the water. Now I haven't got it turned all the way up because it's darkened the sea just a little bit too much and then I lose the balance between the sea and the sky. So I've just got it turned on a little bit, just take a little bit of the reflections off uh, but still maintain that balance. And then the other one I've got in there is a neutral density filter as well. And this is to give me a long exposure because I want to smooth everything out and sort of enhance that feeling of calm that I'm hoping to get from the picture. Okay, I've got the camera set up, I've got my composition set up, and now it's time for the most exciting part of any trip out with a camera, and that's to take the picture. I think that image looks quite good on the back of the LCD screen, but I won't know more until I get back and post-process it. So why don't you come back with me and we'll do a little bit of post-process. I'll just show you a couple of techniques I'm gonna to use to help me realize my vision for this picture. And I think this one also deserves to be printed. I'll see you in a minute. Hello and welcome back. Now we're gonna do a little bit of post-processing and I promise you it's just gonna be a little bit. And I say that for two reasons. First of all, I don't do a lot of post-processing in my videos. Well, as I say, I don't do a lot of post-processing full stop, so don't expect me to go through this image for about 
20 minutes, it should only take a few minutes. And you know, the other thing is, um, I'm not going to cover everything that I normally do in post-processing anyway. I've already done a video on that, so uh, I've done a video on catalog management and the kind of things that I do normally in post-processing. So I'll include the links for that up in the corner of the screen. What I'm going to concentrate on this video is just a couple of sort of local adjustments I'm going to make to this image to help me realise exactly uh, the vision that I had uh, when I went out to take this vision. So I'm just going to tweak the image a little bit. So why don't we jump into Lightroom and I'll tell you uh, what we're going to do. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and you can see my final image here. Now if I toggle the uh, original image on, so you can see where we started. This is a raw file from the camera and this is what I've processed it to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual copy. So we've got a secondary copy to work to. Now, very quickly, some of the, the tweaks that I've done, I've changed the white balance, I've increased the exposure a little bit, a bit of contrast, dropped the highlights, brought up the shadows a little bit, dropped the saturation just a little bit. So that's really the basic settings that I've done for the image. There'll be a little bit of uh, sharpening as well, but on the whole, that's all this image really needs. But let's take a look at some of the local adjustments that I want to make. So the local adjustments I've made on this comprise of two graduated filters. There's one for the sky and there's one for the cob itself. So we have a look at the one for the cob. If I press O, that brings on the layer mask and you can see here there's a layer mask covering the cob. Uh, and what I'll do is we'll delete that and we'll um, go through that process again of creating that. I'll show you why I've done that and what I've done to it, that mask. So we'll just delete that. And then the other graduated filter is for the sky. And so there's some minor tweaks there. So I'm just going to delete that one as well. So that's the local adjustments deleted. Let's try and recreate them. So I'll get a graduated filter and I'm going to drag it up from the top. And I'm going to want the, I press the shift key and that straightens it out. And I want the middle line just to be above the horizon. Now I've got O pressed here, so the mask is already highlighted. But as you can see, it's covering the entire bottom of the image. And all I actually want to do is I want to make a mask selection just for the cob itself, because that's where I want to focus my changes to. So in order to do that, I'm going to put a range mask on and I'm going to use color in this instance. I'm going to switch off the mask for a second and pick up the color dropper tool. And I'm going to select uh, an area here that kind of covers most of the colors. Let's just drag that like that. Now the reason I want to make adjustments to the cob as I find it, it's a bit warm, the colors at the moment, it doesn't go well with the rest of the image. So I just want to try and cool that down a bit. So if I put the mask on now, you can see that most of the cob is selected, but there are some areas around here uh, at the sea here that I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to put, select a brush. I'm going to select a raise, and I'm really just going to rub those out. I'm going to make a very quick job of it here. You can spend a little bit more time. So that's when we've got a pretty good mask there already for uh, making adjustments just to the cob itself. So I'm going to make my edits. So I've just reset some of these values. I'm going to take the mask off so I can see what's changing. So like I said, I wanted to cool that uh, area of the cob down a little bit to match the rest of the sea. So I'm just going to grab the temperature slider and just pull that down just a fraction. And you can see already the kind of tones in the cob are, trying to, uh, are matching what's in the sea and the sky. Uh, that's pretty happy with that. I want to add a bit more texture into there, into the cob. So I'm going to just get, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can get a bit closer and I'm going to put the texture up. I don't want to crank this slider up too much because it will make it look unnatural. Just a couple of stops there. There we go. Pretty happy with that. So that local adjustment there using the graduated filter has allowed me just to cool that down and just add a little bit more texture into the cob itself. Let's take a look at the sky. Grab a new graduated filter. I'm going to drag from the top this time, holding down the shift key again, just below the horizon, I think. If I press O to put the mask on, you can see the red area there just on top of the, the cob. I really don't want to make adjustments to the cob, so I'm going to use a luminance mask this time. So I'm going to go to mask, luminance, and if I switch that one off and I click on show luminance mask, it allows me to see the changes that I'm making to the mask. I'm going to slide that range up a little bit, and you can see the red starts to disappear 
from the cob. I'm just going to drag it down a little bit further. And now there's no red area on the mask. Now we can make the changes on this graduated filter only impact in the sky. So I'll take the luminance mask off. All I really want to do here is drop the exposure just a little bit, not very much. Same for the highlights. Just as You might not be able to see these changes because you're watching it on a recorded screen. Uh, they're obviously a bit more obvious to myself when I'm looking at them straight in the monitor. The other thing I want to do is I'm just gonna drop the clarity and the dehaze both slightly to the, the left. Now the cloud and the sky is already quite sort of blurry and ethereal because of the, the long exposure. But I'm just giving it a little bit of a kick to the left just to enhance that feeling. And that's that done. So there we go, I've put two graduated filters in and I've used a color mask and I've used a luminosity mask to help me refine the selection. Everything else is fairly standard, but those small adjustments there have just helped me, you know, sort of enhance the mood of the image and the tone that I was looking for. Okay, that's the edit done. As you can see, it was a pretty light touch approach. Now, as with many things in post-processing, there are different ways to achieve the same result. So what I've done here in Lightroom is probably neither the only way or necessarily the correct way. You can might use Photoshop, for example, you might paint on your masks. However you do it, um, it's about realizing the vision of your photograph. Obviously, I sped up the process here a little bit. We might have been a little bit more careful with my masking and stuff like that, but hopefully you've got the idea. But now that we've got the edit out of the way, we're going to do the most exciting bit, and that's printing. And again, as with the editing, there are lots of different ways to uh, get your images printed out. So whether you use Lightroom or Photoshop, or as I do, because I've got a Canon Pixman Pro XS, I like to use the Canon's Print Studio Pro software. So why don't we jump into that and have a quick look about how we're gonna set this print up. So here we are, I've got my image open in Lightroom. I'm just gonna open up Canon's Print Studio Pro. And here we have the image loaded into Print Studio Pro. So I already know what paper size and what paper I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go for an A3 plus page and I'm gonna use PhotoSpeed's uh, Legacy Gloss Paper. It's one of my favorite papers. So I'm gonna check my printer settings. I've got them on the right printer. I'm supposed to be on semi-gloss because it's a semi-gloss paper. I've got A3 plus, I want print high quality. I've got the correct printer profile. So I've already got a custom profile already for my printer and that particular paper. And we're gonna go into layout and we're gonna choose borderless. And the reason I'm picking a borderless print is because the frame that I've got um, is already configured and set up, ready to take a full bleed photo. So just a quick last double check. Everything looks all right. I think we're ready to hit the print button. So that's it, pretty straightforward. Of course, I've got all my color profiles already set up. I'm pretty well ready to hit print. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna stick a bit of paper in the printer, hit print, and we'll watch this image come to life. Let's take a look at the final product. Here it is here. And this is just such a great example of why I print at home. Just, I mean, I thought the image looked good on the computer screen, but printing it off, it just takes a whole new life to itself. It just looks absolutely glorious. I'm really happy with the way it's translated from my original vision down at the cob and coming back and doing some post-processing and then printing it and making this, this large print here. Just images come alive when you print them off. And so if it's something you don't do, I really recommend that you give it a try because this is, yeah, this is really something special. I feel like I've, I've actually created something from my morning's work now. I think the only last thing I want to do now is probably just stick it in the frame. And by the magic of video, here we are, it's already in its frame. And doesn't it look great? Hopefully this has inspired you to undertake something similar. Go out with a vision, go and capture that photograph, come back, process it, print it off and create something. It's really an important part of the, the photographic journey, as I said. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please do consider leaving me a comment, giving it a like, sharing it, all that kind of good stuff as well. Um, and if you want to see for more, click on that subscribe button as well. But until the next one, I'll see you then.